Welcome to the Mystic Access Podcast, where the magic is in learning. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Mystic Access Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Kim. And I'm Lisa. And we're going to talk about some things, including upcoming festivities. But first, I wanted to talk a little bit about the accessible Samsung TV. We're getting a lot of questions about it. Lots, lots. <laughs> and the main question is, will it work with my cable box? If you have a cable box that is not accessible, so if you receive your cable through, or your television, rather, through a cable or a satellite and neither one of those set-top boxes speak. The TV will not be magic. It will not announce the channel numbers. It will not announce the guide of your set-top box. That would be up to the provider. So for example, Comcast has the talking set-top box. So in conjunction with the Comcast talking set-top box and the Samsung TV, you could have a full experience, meaning you would be able to use the talking features of the Samsung TV to know that you're on the TV, you're in HDMI 1, 2, 3, or however many your TV supports, go into the settings of the TV, make those kinds of changes and things like that. But as far as reading the guide and reading the channels, it will not unless your cable is connected directly to the TV. And most people don't have cable connected directly to the TV these days. It goes through a satellite box or a cable box. So can you still like go to, I know YouTube was one of the things you could do on this TV. Is that something you can still do with your non-accessible box? Yes, because again, you're working with the settings of the TV, TV itself. itself. Think of the cable box as like a hole. So when you turn on the cable box and you flip to the, the HDMI input, however your cable box is connected, then the Samsung TV speech doesn't know what to say. So in light of making this discovery, and admittedly this is something we did not know when we first announced this on the podcast, <laughs> that it was not going to play nice with non-speaking cable or satellite boxes the tutorial is still going to be created but it is going to be offered for free on our free downloads page it's just going to be something that you guys can listen to particularly if you're new to us or if you're curious as to how it works or if it's something that you're wondering what our products are like perhaps you have one that you'd like to see what something else is like it's going to be a free resource to kind of let you know what we're all about how we create tutorials and it'll be daisy it will be available for free to anyone interested. And for those of you who can use it, then you'll have access to learn all about it. And for those of you who can't, it's just kind of a fun little toy to <laughs> learn more about. And we apologize very much that this is something that came to our attention after the fact and after we got everybody all excited about it. We do want to make it right in that we're not obviously going to charge you for it since a huge percentage of you will not be able to utilize it in a way that we hoped. And that would be being able to read the channels and read the guide. I mean, that's that's kind of an important... That's the main thing. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's an important experience when you're dealing with TV. The other thing I wanted to note about the TV tutorial is the TV tutorial will be out in the first quarter of 2017. I have other projects that are taking up my time until the end of the year. Again, the TV tutorial will be out in the first quarter of 2017. Yeah, and probably early first quarter. There's stuff we've got to get done. One thing that we promised you guys that we would have done by the end of 2016 is getting everything we have currently daisy. That's one of the Chris's pet projects right now is getting everything we have in a nice daisy format for you guys. So that's a priority right now. We want to get that done. We have a few major projects that need to be completed by the end of this quarter. So lots happening and lots we need Chris to Daisy <laughs> and do in terms of some of that. And That's kind of where we're at right and now. And Daisy does take time. Yes, it does. Daisy, if you think about it in the terms of a tutorial, if a tutorial is 12 hours to listen to, it's probably going to take twice or, or maybe even yeah. three times that 
to actually create the daisy because of the way that we daisy things. We kind of get a little carried away, but we don't just do section one, section two, section three. We split it up into like what's important within that section one, section two, or section three. I don't want to flip through something and say, oh, well, section one is, let's take the Braille Note Touch tutorial, for example. In the section that deals with keyword, we want to show you how to, say, open a file or select text. Those would be pretty good navigation points instead of just the section that deals with keyword and then flipping on to something else. So we kind of go a little bit crazy with daisy navigation. Or in a section such as orientation, for instance, especially the touch is a good example of this. Well, what's on the front face? What's on the left hand side? What's on the back? What's on the right hand side? What's on the bottom? Where's the battery compartment? All that stuff is navigable using daisy. We really want to make everything as intuitive for you guys as is possible to do which is why DAISY is a time-consuming process. We would rather you be able to have more navigation and find what you want easily, quickly, and intuitively. The other night, I was adding my Google Calendar to my Amazon Echo, and I knew that there was a specific skill, and it was covered in the tutorial, but I couldn't remember the name of the skill. I was able to go through the DAISY version of the tutorial very quickly and easily find what I need, which really is one of the big advantages, the DAISY format. Just because we have DAISY, that does not mean that we're getting rid of the MP3 format. So if you have an MP3 player that will not play DAISY, or you would just prefer to have the MP3, we will still make that available. Absolutely. It's not going anywhere. You're still going to have both when you download something. And for those who haven't purchased from us before, that is something you receive upon downloading any of our digital products you will receive access to both an MP3 only and a fully navigable DAISY version of the products that have been daisy so far. And there are more and more of them every day <laughs> that are being daisy In fact, the voice stream tutorials are being daisy as we speak. Those will be the next things that are ready for you guys to enjoy in a DAISY format. So that's one of the things that needs to be finished by the end of this quarter, and we're excited to be able to have all that done for you. And next we talk about the fun stuff, the holiday Yes, season. lots of fun stuff coming up. Yes. Yay! Very exciting. And of course, the first fun thing that is coming up in our land <laughs> is Black Friday. We have gone through and created lots of Black Friday discounted goodies for you. Everything in the store is discounted except the two VoIP tutorials, which are $5.97 a piece. And we're not discounting those. So they're plenty cheap as it is. <laughs> those are not daisy yet, by the way, but they will be. You know, if you want those, that's already a really, really good deal. So those aren't being discounted. Everything else is being discounted between 10 and 25% off. And you will not have to enter any codes or goodies or anything to get those discounts. When you come on the site starting at 12.01 on Black Friday, those will be available to you. You'll be able to receive those discounts. Now, just a note, any coupon codes that you may have, available to you at Black Friday will not work for this Black Friday through Cyber Monday promotion. You're just going to get the 10 to 25% discounts depending on what you get. Your codes won't be eligible for the Black Friday promotions. The Black Friday promotions will run from Black Friday through the end of Cyber Monday. So that's the 25th through the end of the 28th. I think Lisa has something fun to share about Black Friday as well. Lisa does. Um, <laughs> of course, we are always here between nine and five during the Eastern week, time. Eastern yes. time. Uh, you know, if the rest of the world would just run on Eastern time, it would I be know. so nice. Wouldn't that be perfect? It would be. So normally we're open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time, Monday through Friday. But on Black Friday, in order to help you if you need assistance placing in order and also to accommodate those who are in other time zones or maybe you're one of these people that traipses out to the mall at the crack of dawn or maybe you're just one of these people that needs to take a little bit of extra time and sleep off that thanksgiving turkey coma we are open until 11 p.m friday evening and don't forget if you don't get us let's say that you call and you want to place an order the discounts do go through monday and we are going to be in the office monday so if you don't reach us on the weekend don't panic just let us know when to call you Monday, 
and we'll give you a call back and get you taken care of. And the easiest way, if you want our later hours on Friday, is to call the main number, 716-543-3323. And if you call after 5 p.m. Eastern Time, just press 1. That should get you to where you need to go in allowing you to reach us for those later hours. Speaking of hours, by the way, I don't think any of us are going to be available for your calls on Thanksgiving. We're going to be away indulging in turkey and dressing and pumpkin pie, so we will not be available to take your calls on Thursday, the 24th. But the site is always open. Yes, any time, day or night, you're welcome to come place your orders with us. If you need to hear back from us about anything or have any questions, obviously we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. Uh, You can also email us, info at mysticaccess.com. We'll reach all of us. And when we are done with our Thanksgiving turkey comas, we will do our best to get back to you as quickly as possible. You notice they always talk about a turkey coma. I just did it. Yeah. The turkey is not what gets me in trouble. Ooh, it's all the stuff that goes with it. I know. I'm the same way. No, not the ham. (laughs) Like (laughs) the stuffing and the the sides, the side dishes. Oh, okay. They do me in. Yeah, I'm the same No, we we have all the ham we can handle on this podcast. That's I'm true. thinking. Yeah, I, yes. I, I agree with that. <laughs> yes. But I could have in my freezer. Well, there you good. go. You have Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. You're going to have 50 million people. He's a huge family, so he's going to have a 50 million people Thanksgiving dinner. That's that's what's going on with him. Yes, I'm going to my brother's for Thanksgiving, so my brother always has a lot of people over every Thanksgiving, so it ought to be fun. I'm having a nice fairly small Thanksgiving dinner with friends, which is just the way I like it. I do like the hustle and bustle, but after about an hour with too many people in a small space, and then they start telling stories and it gets into who can tell the story more loudly. It's like, okay, I'm ready to be thankful somewhere else. So (laughs) I'm doing just that this year and I'm looking forward to it. That's what I tend to agree. I do like a slightly quieter affair but as i was laughingly telling chris earlier this week when we were having a conversation my family doesn't do inside voices we don't uh-huh. know what inside voices are so there's not lots of quiet so i really don't know yet uh in terms of what's going on for thanksgiving in my world yet but i'm sure whatever turns up will be something lovely and i always treat myself to the macy's thanksgiving parade prior no matter what I am doing or what needs to be happening at that time. So that's always a fun tradition for me. I always enjoy watching the parade before. I am a little sad because a Thanksgiving tradition that I had for several years is no more. Um. I know it's silly, and I normally did not listen to his show, but I always listened on Thanksgiving night when David Letterman had his mom on. Oh, yes. She was so sweet. I just wanted to take her home. He always guessed what kind of pies she made and I couldn't care less whether he was right or wrong it was all about seeing her but also this kicks off my highest period of TV consumption all year because I am a huge fan of TV Christmas specials so we'll be enjoying those in abundance oh yes lots of lovely things coming up in terms of TV Christmas watching. I guarantee you that at this moment, my mother is indulging in Hallmark Christmas movies, as she has been for the last few weekends. So, hi, Mom. I hope you're enjoying your Hallmark Christmas movies as we record this on a weekend. (laughs) I know that some people love this, and some are like, oh, just wait till after Thanksgiving, but I have started playing Christmas music. That has an extra special touch this year because... Some of my listening has been done through our Senti Bluetooth headphones. Ah, yes. And these things, I mean, you feel like you're, I don't know, like an aviator. Or you're a serious yes. sound engineer or something. They're large and very nice feeling and very complete sounding. And they're wonderful for music. I'm enjoying those. So you probably would not get them in time for Thanksgiving. But if you have a long family trip coming up over the river and through the woods and sanity must be maintained at all (laughs) cost you might want to opt to get a pair of these headphones you could gently tune out the world and they'd never know because you'd be wearing a big smile on your face and enjoying your music 
in absolute comfort too I might add these things are so comfortable I don't know what your experience has been but I can wear them for hours and just not even care so, so can I I love the way that your cups feel this is yeah. probably one of the more inane things I've ever said on a podcast <laughs> but I just want to pet them they, oh, they I agree. just feel so nice yeah, they, no, they really I do and that yeah. they're really excellent Think, ladies, of your really nice purses, your really nice leather purses. Your headphones are made out of that same, uh, or, or maybe not the same type of leather. It's not like a pebble leather or something. It's a, it's more, if you're a, a fan of glove leather, it's it's more of a glove leather. Yeah, it, it does. It feels like kid gloves. You're right. Yeah, yeah. It's, That's it's it, awesome. exactly. And speaking of headphones and Christmas music, I must make a recommendation to anyone interested. I know Lisa and I are both into solo piano music and enjoy quite a lot of that. So if any of you are into that really beautiful Christmas album I just discovered yesterday, I believe it was, is an album by a gentleman named Doug Hammer, just like a hammer. It's called Christmas Lights. He's got a couple Christmas albums, but this one I particularly love. And it's solo piano, and it's just really beautiful. And I just happened to discover it yesterday and was listening on my Amazon Unlimited Music subscription through my Alexa. It's just really beautiful stuff. So if you're interested in checking out a new Christmas album and you enjoy solo piano fair, you may want to give that a shot. There's a good mix of the sacred and secular Christmas fair and uh, lots of lovely, lovely stuff. It's very diverse in terms of his styles of putting stuff in there. And it's just really well done, I think. Excellent. I know I'll check that out for sure. And we have something else for our listeners to check out, I believe. It is our recent appearance on Stocking Stuffers on Tech Talk. Those of you who are, are not familiar with Tech Talk, every year they do at least a two-part program that features various vendors of assistive technology and stuff that could be useful for blind and low vision individuals. We were pleased and delighted to be on for our second year, Mystic Access's second year, and we were on Stocking Stuffers Part 2, and we have goodies to share with you. We're just going to give a quick overview of our catalog. You're going to hear our presentation as it was heard on Stocking Stuffers. And <clears throat> I suggest you listen closely. You may find a surprise. On that note, I think we are going to sign off and insert the Stocking Stuffers presentation after we say to everybody have a happy and safe uh, holiday season or the next week if you're not celebrating any holidays yes have a wonderful thanksgiving for everyone celebrating oh let's really quick since we did this last year what are you guys grateful for this year just for me i just feel like life and work balance have really gotten back in the swing for me especially just in the last few weeks i kind of feel like the pieces are kind of falling back together for those of you who don't know, I tend to have my fingers in a whole lot of different pies and like it that way. I feel like I've been stretched a little thin lately, and I feel like that's kind of coming to a nice, satisfactory resolution for me now. So I'm feeling more in balance and more peaceful and just better about where I am in terms of how I'm balancing out life and work and the various facets of what I do and how I try to assist people in the world. So I'm very, very grateful for that. And what about you guys? I would say that it's going to sound corny, but it's true. I'm grateful for the podcast listeners because Yay. if you didn't have the podcast listeners, you wouldn't have a podcast. So it would that's be, true. Yeah. And we've grown in such leaps and bounds this year. Thanks to you guys. Really, we're very grateful to have you guys listening to us. There are lots of podcasts you could listen to, and we're very happy that you've chosen to listen to us. <laughs> and in the realm of things sounding scripted or canned, I'm afraid this will fall into that category, or so it could seem. But when Kim asked this question, it was absolutely the first thing that popped back into my mind because it has been on my mind a lot in recent days. And I'm very thankful for my somewhat recent association with Mystic Access. I love working with Kim and Chris and talking to all of you and playing with and learning new technologies and just learning the new ideas that working with and interacting with new people brings. And we really are thankful for all of you for your support of Mystic Access, for your questions. I once saw a plaque with this saying, and I think it appropriately sums up how we feel about all of you who support us. And it says, when I count my blessings, I count you twice. Yes, absolutely. I love that. That's a perfect way to end. So absolutely. Every, 
everybody have a wonderful time and keep listening. Bye. 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 Hello, everybody on uh, Stocking Stuffers. This is Chris Grabowski with Mystic Access, and I have Kim here and Lisa here. Hi. Hello. And we are going to talk about some of our new goodies that came out this year. The first thing that I wanted to talk about is the audio tutorial for the Google Suite of products. This is an audio tutorial that demonstrates the Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and some of Google Hangouts using a wide variety of assistive technologies including JAWS for Windows, NVDA, Chrome Vox, and for the web browsers we use Internet Explorer, Firefox, and Chrome. And this will show you how to navigate within Google Drive, Docs, how to select files, how to add formatting, check your font size, and a bunch of other little goodies. The tutorial for that is just under five hours in length. So there's lots to learn from. Chris gives lots of examples and walks you through. One thing that's kind of important to remember about this particular tutorial is it's best to listen sequentially. In other words, from front to back all the way through once before you go off and begin exploring because he shows you in a variety of environments. So if this is something that interests you and you may want to move away from Office or you're looking for Office alternatives or you're trying to find a different word processing application or in this case website <laughs> to assist you, then this might be something useful that you may wish to look into and learn about the accessibility features and functions of the cool little Google properties that are available. A lot of school systems actually use Google Docs and Chromebooks and things like that. And in this tutorial, we show you how to use Google Docs with the Chromebook and Chromevox using speech. Some businesses, especially small businesses as well, are going that route. When I first listened through this tutorial, I had such mixed feelings because the whole Google thing really kind of intimidated me. And then Chris is off and running and he's using a Chrome box and he's using a Chromebook. And I'm thinking, I don't have a Chromebook. And I don't think I really want Chrome Vox. It was really neat because the longer I listened, I realized it didn't matter because they've gone to great lengths to ensure that all of the products, whether you're using Drive or Slides or Docs, work very similarly. So it really doesn't matter a whole lot whether you're using a Chromebook or a computer or an iPhone or an Android phone. It's interesting to see them demonstrated on different devices, but it's very easy to apply the concepts to the devices that you're using. For example, you could use the Chromebook section and apply it to Firefox and NVDA because the keystrokes and what it says for the most part are all the same. And then we are going to switch to the latest and greatest product that was just released, and that is the Apple Watch tutorial. And that was Lisa's baby, and she did a very brilliant job creating something that is both extensive and a lot of fun to listen to. I was kind of a skeptic when I kind of was thinking about Apple Watch. Oh, man, you know, and I'd have to get an iPhone, and, you know, is it something I want to do, and it's more expensive than I necessarily wanted to pay. And by the time I had gotten through about section six or so, she'd completely sold me on it. And I was dreaming about my new, my new <laughs> as yet unpurchased Apple Watch with the new rose gold SE that I still haven't purchased either. So <laughs> one of the things I love most is that I felt like as a listener, as someone going through and listening to what she was offering, that she was anticipating all of my questions before I even had the chance to start wondering, well, I wonder where she's going to answer this. So it was quite magical and fun to listen to that. I'm just very happy that we have such a cohesive offering to share more about the watch with you guys. I don't believe that there are any blindness-specific resources about the Apple Watch other than the tutorial. There is a user guide from Apple, and that's helpful, but it doesn't talk about voiceover in every section and how you use this and how you do that like we try to do. I really wanted to create something that would apply to everyone or nearly everyone. I think that the tutorial would work well 
for someone who doesn't really know if they want a watch. Maybe it's best to invest in the tutorial and learn about it and decide either, yeah, I really want this watch or it's not for me. I wasn't so sure when I got the watch if it was the right thing. I remember saying to more than one person, I don't even like talking watches. Some of the features that the watch has, until I really started playing with them and working with them, I didn't see the usefulness of them like I do now. The tutorial will work regardless of whether you're using the first or the second edition Apple Watch, and it does start with Watch OS 3. We don't go back farther than that because Watch OS 3 is the current version and it runs on all versions of the watch that are available. There are a number of very well done podcasts that start with Watch version 1 and 2, but it's a little confusing because some things have changed so drastically that that information is no longer relevant or even usable. So what we've done is put everything together into one unit where you can get what you need and have everything, the skills and the tools that you need to be up and running with this. Around four and a half to five hours does seem to be the sweet spot for the new tutorials that we are releasing because this one is a bit over four and a half hours long. And the sweet spot seems to be 39 bucks for the pricing that we tend to be offering on tutorials of around this length because that is what these two new ones will be for the download, for the digital download. And if you want an SD card with the tutorial on it sent to your door, that is 49 If you're looking for some really fun presents for yourself or someone you love and you want a hardware gift as opposed to a software gift, we've got you covered there too with two pairs of Bluetooth headphones that we recently have begun to offer. And of course, each of them comes with one of our comprehensive tutorials. The first one, and my personal favorite, is by a company called Cinti. And they are some of the most luxe, delicious, comfy headphones I've ever used. And for their price point, the sound, the comfort level, and the build and construction of these, I feel, is absolutely amazing. The sound quality is really fantastic. I've used headphones twice as expensive as these, and the sound is really comparable to those. So, I'm very, very pleased to be able to say that we offer these. They offer not only a Bluetooth experience, they have Bluetooth 4.0 technology, but they also are wired. So if you don't want to use Bluetooth and use the battery, and you get about 15 hours of battery life on these, by the way, you can hook them up to a 3.5 millimeter wire, plug them into a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and whatever you wish to connect them to, and you can utilize them that way. They also have controls on the side. It's a round cursor cross, and that allows you to change volume and change tracks, pause, and stop playback of your music as well. They charge via micro USB, and they also fold up. One of my favorite things about these, and this is something that we commented on when we received our various headphones, is the fact that they come with a really amazing hard shell case. They charge via micro USB, And one of the things that we're very proud of is, as with our extensive line of Bluetooth speakers, both sets of headphones that we've just recently begun offering have voice prompts available as well. So when you turn them on, when you move to maximum volume, for instance, when you do various things with them, when you connect to your Bluetooth, for instance, you are going to receive prompts with a pleasant female voice in the case of both these pairs of headphones. We're very happy about that and really want these to be as intuitive as possible for you in terms of using them. These are 75 bucks, and of course they come with one of our tutorials, which is just over 40 minutes in length. I think it's about 43 minutes when all is said and done. It takes you through everything from orientation to Bluetooth connectivity to wired connectivity. It even shows you how to connect with a natively non-Bluetooth device because that is doable. And one of the things about these headphones that are so nice is that you can connect to two devices simultaneously. So if you have an iPad and an iPhone, for instance, you can connect to both of those and switch between them. The other pair of headphones that we are offering is a slightly less expensive option. They're $45, 
and they are by a company called eCandy. One of the things that's really nice about these is they're very lightweight. They include voice prompts utilizing the NeoSpeech Julie voice. They do essentially anything you'd want a pair of headphones to do. <laughs> like the Sentis, they are foldable, whereas the Senti has that round cursor cross that I mentioned. These actually have buttons on the side that allow you to move through the various functions. They are noise isolating over the ear headphones, just like the Sentis, which I did not mention a moment ago, but they are noise isolating and over the ear headphones, as are these. And they offer FM radio and SD card modes, as well as having Bluetooth 3.0 and the ability to use them wired or wirelessly. One of the things that I think is really nice about these headphones that we're offering is that the wire is detachable. <laughs> so you can not only use them wired or wirelessly, but you're not gonna have to worry about in six months to a year, one of the ears going poof, and you suddenly no longer have access to your nice left ear or what have you on your headphones, and you have just lost the use of that pair of headphones because you can't use them properly. We're very happy about that in terms of these. And these come with an extensive tutorial as well. It's about an hour in length, and it takes you through using all the different modes. One of the things that I attempt to show in the course of both these tutorials is the sound quality that you're going to receive. But the good news is you don't have to buy the tutorials to find out how they sound. If you go to the product pages for these headphones on the website, you will be able to hear samples of what these headphones sound like. And of course, your mileage will vary in terms of listening to them. You will be hearing them exactly as I tried to portray them to you, but you will get an idea of the type of sound quality you'll receive when you listen to these headphones. So we're very pleased with these. We think they would make awesome Christmas presents or holiday gifts for yourself or, of course, for someone you love. We also still have our highly acclaimed Victor Reader Stream audio tutorial, which has just had a permanent price reduction. The yes, it's $59 now. And there is our ever-popular Amazon Echo tutorial, <laughs> which is $39. If you kind of want to know what our, our main sweet spot price point is, you've probably figured it out by now. It's $39. That's for the digital download. This is a six-and-a-half-hour tutorial, and it's $49, again, if you want an SD card shipped to your door. We have other cool things as well. We have the Voice Stream Reader and Voice Stream Writer tutorials. Lisa does Reader, and I do Writer. We also have Lisa's TW Blue tutorial available if you're looking for a really cool, accessible, and free Twitter client. These all run between $15 and $25, depending on which of those you want. Writer is $15, and TW Blue and Reader are both right around the $25 mark. You know how a moment ago I was speaking about being able to access your non-Bluetooth devices? Well, we have something for that as well. It is called the Avantech BRZ8 transmitter receiver and this is a cool little device that comes with an almost hour-long tutorial that will guide you through it so if you want something like your stream or your book sense or something to be a bluetooth player and it's not natively for $55, you can purchase this little goodie from us, and it will come with a tutorial showing you exactly how you can utilize it to play your stream through your new Cinti headphones, for instance. We also have training and consulting and self-advocacy services available. It's definitely worth checking out our website. We also offer custom tutorials if there's something that we currently don't offer that you are in search of. So what we'd like to do now is insert a montage of some of our tutorials for you to just give you an idea of the quality and the mix and what they sound like a bit, to just give you a little taster of what our products are like. So we're going to do that for you now, and we hope you enjoy it. So now that I've oriented you to these great little headphones, let's listen to what these headphones sound like. They have 40 millimeter drivers in them, and they sound really, really great. Between the noise isolation and just how good they sound, it's just a really nice listening experience. So what I'm going to do is show you how Bluetooth works on these first. I'm going to press and hold the circle within the circle, and we're going to hear a voice prompt. And then when I hear the voice prompt, I'm going to release. Power on. And it says power on, and you hear that beep right there. So now what I'm going to do is turn on Bluetooth on my iPad. Turn on Bluetooth. Okay, I turned on Bluetooth. Set. So now, Set. Bluetooth. On. I'm going to go into my Bluetooth Settings. settings. Google Docs. In this section, we're going to take a look at Google Docs. We're going to navigate through the menus and toolbars, open a document, modify a document, apply styles, check formatting, 
and much more. I am currently running NVDA using the Microsoft Speech Platform Zero Voice. So let's go to the desktop. Desktop list. And I'm going to go to Firefox. M. Z. Mozilla Firefox check. Press enter. Mozilla Fire. And I'm going to press Control L to go to a new location. Navigation toolbar toolbar. And I'm going to type D I E O O G drive.google.com and press enter. Mozilla Firefox start page document busy. Search query edit collapsed. Folder list view list. ASR recordings Google Drive folder owned by me last mod. So we are now in our items list and NVDA automatically switched us to focus mode. Now what happens if I want to reconnect to the speaker? This device is supposed to remember the last eight things that you've had connected to it. So that's really handy. Normally what you will do is just do what we did before, plug it into whatever device you want to turn into a Bluetooth device, connect it to your Bluetooth speaker or headphones. In other words, have the speaker on and I like to have the device playing a book or music or what have you just to make sure I know that my connection is working and successful and then plug in your transmitter to the device as long as it has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack this will work in transmission mode remember the transmission mode is the switch flipped to the left if you're holding it the way I described earlier so now that I've oriented you to the headphones let's try them out I'm going to press and hold the power button until I hear Julie's voice. BT Wireless is ready to pair. And I've released the power button, and she says BT Wireless is ready to pair. She's a very clear female voice, and unfortunately, this is one of the caveats of these headphones, when you turn her on, she's pretty loud. <laughs> so, what I suggest you do is once you start your music or your audio, just press and hold the volume down button, and that's the one directly next to the power play pause button. So right underneath it in the vertical row, you press and hold that for about a second, maybe a little less, and you'll be able to turn it down and get it to a comfortable level for you. The next feature is lock. Let's take a look. Lock. Switch button. Off. Double. Off. 9.25 p.m. Tunkhanok, 9.25 p.m. Enter passcode. So basically what this has done is it has locked the watch, which does not necessarily mean even that it has gone to sleep, just that it has made it necessary for me to enter my passcode, which I will do now. Just a reminder, I have done that by flicking to the number that I want or sliding my finger around the screen to find it. And then I need to double tap on each number of my passcode. You might think that locking the watch would be the same as putting it to sleep. In actuality, putting it to sleep couldn't be easier, especially if you turn on the cover to mute feature in settings. All you have to do is cover the watch with the palm of your hand and it will go to sleep. I can only guess that this must be some sort of light sensitive setting because when I covered it with my fingers, there must have been enough light getting through that it didn't work. It had to genuinely be the palm of my hand. Let's learn a little more about Alexa. Alexa, tell me about yourself. I'm an Amazon Echo, designed around your voice. I could provide information, music, news, weather, and more. Alexa, how tall are you? I'm about 10 inches tall. Alexa, what's your radius? My radius is 1.6 inches. Alexa, how much do you weigh? I weigh a little over two pounds. Alexa, what do you look like? I'm a nine inch tall black cylinder. So as I mentioned, she does respond to your voice. And here are some tips that can assist you as you begin talking to your Amazon Echo. I'm going to go back just a little bit because I want to put an audio notation right here before this red velvet cake recipe. So I'm going to press my rewind key a couple times. Not refrigerate for a few minutes to thicken. Use immediately. Red for a few minutes to thicken. Use immediately. Okay, I heard it start to say red velvet cake, so I just hit the rewind button one more time and then the pause button to pause. 
I want to insert an audio bookmark here. To do that, I'm going to press the bookmark key. Go to bookmark. Press it again. Insert bookmark. Now, rather than hitting confirm to put bookmark two here, since we already have a bookmark one at my birthday cake recipe, I'm going to hit the record button and record a notation. Start recording. I bet this is a really yummy recipe. I must try it. Stop recording. Bookmark two inserted. And to stop recording that bookmark and to insert it, I pressed the record button once again. So now I have another bookmark inserted. I want to put my shark into pairing mode, so I'm going to find my play pause button, which is the fourth in the row. I'm going to press and hold it. Pairing. And it says pairing. You heard the female voice prompt there. And now I'm going to move through my list of Bluetooth devices. And there it is, it found it. Shark Boombox. Shark is S-H-A-R-K-K, -K, by the way, and that's probably how you're going to hear, if you're using Alex like I am, him pronounce it. I assume some of these other voices may pronounce it similarly. So I'm going to double tap, and you're going to notice that it connects very quickly. Connected. Here we go. On. On. So <laughs> you heard Alex there. And now I'm going to move in and find us some music to listen to. App leisure. Set FaceTime. This is, three fingers the app. Actions available. this is Bluetooth 4.0, so the speed of it Test. is really Test flight. Mail. Active. fantastic. Calendar. Active. TV go. NFB news. TV go. Calendar. Mail. Test. ML. FaceTime. Radio tunes. All right. So Swipe here's the app I actually FaceTime. wanted. Double tap to open. I'm going to move into radio tunes and play us some tunes. Radio tunes. V2. Pop. Soft rock set selected. Styles. And... All. Old pop rock. Soft country jazz. American vocal smooth jazz. The best of vocal smooth jazz. Let's go into vocal Randy, smooth vocal jazz. jazz. I'm awfully tired. I'm awfully tired. So, I guess I'll go. So you have really oh, tremendous sound quality. Screen locked. Just locking my screen. But this is the end of the line. And we're back. We hope you found something there that you enjoyed and may wish to share with yourself or someone you love for this holiday season. We touched on most of it, but not everything. So definitely check out the website. It's very extensive in terms of giving you all the information you need about the products and services we offer. And we also can be reached via phone or email. 716-543-3323 is our main number. Info at mysticaccess.com will reach myself, Lisa, and Chris. And if you prefer ordering via phone, any of us can assist you with that. You're welcome to call us and place your orders that way. And we have a special goodie for all of you Tech Talk Stocking Stuffers listeners. If you use the code word SILVERBELLS during checkout, you will receive 10% off of your order until December 14th, 2016. This is our way of saying happy holidays. The preceding podcast is a presentation of Mystic Access, where the magic is in learning. To contact us, please visit www.mysticaccess.com. Call us, 716-543-3323, and press 2 to reach our Mystic Access podcast comment line. Email us at show at mysticaccesspodcast.com and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash mysticaccess. Would you like to spread the word about our podcasts? Please tell your friends and colleagues to visit us at www.mysticaccesspodcast.com. If you enjoy what you hear on our podcasts, feel free to leave us an iTunes rating and review. We certainly appreciate those. Also, you may feel free to use our podcasts in your own RSS feed. Just be sure that all of our contact information is left intact. Thanks for spreading the word, and thanks for listening. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode.